Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to this video in Learning Symphony 2. In this video we're going to be covering forms. Uh, we're going to be looking at how to create a basic form inside our controller, how to render that form in our view and also how to handle the submission of that form back to our controller. We're going to look at the available form field types. Uh, the, there's quite a lot available with uh, Symphony out of the box. Um, so it's good to get a sort of your head around what's available. We're going to have to look at how to look at rendering your form. Uh, there's like the new mode, which is relatively straightforward just to paste it in and, and paste some tags into your Twig template and get it displayed. And then we're going to look at the, well, how, how you will probably do it in the real world. That it just allows you to customize it a heck of a lot more. We're going to look at changing the action and the method of your form. So that's like your post and your get and where it's posting to, where it, where that data is actually going to. Um, we're going to look at how to separate out our form logic from our controller into a reusable class. Don't worry too much if that is sounding completely foreign to you at the moment. Um, it's more straightforward than it sounds. And we're going to look at form validation. Um, you, you should never really trust the raw input from a user anyway. Um, Symphony provides two different ways of validating data. Uh, there's front end, which we can't rely on, and uh, we'll get to why. And then the server side validation, um, which you should definitely be implementing. And it's, it is straightforward to do as well, so no excuses. We're going to look at how to prevent cross site request, request forgeries. Um, as it says there, it sounds scary, uh, but it's actually very easy. It's just a, a simple one liner. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So let's, uh, let's crack on. So the, the old style of, of using forms, I've nicked an example here from Tizag, the well-known um, tutorial site. It's actually a terrible example, but it's it highlights a few things really that, that Symphony solves for us. So this is just like the template that you would have used in, in the olden days, perhaps. Um, it's just a simple HTML form, nothing special. We're just posting off our, um, our form data to the process.php uh, file, which we'll look at in a sec. And pretty much all we've got is a list of select uh, a drop down box basically of, of items, paint brushes and whatever and then the quantity which we type in as a text value and then the submit. When you press submit it fires across the process and the process file is horrendous but yeah basically what it's saying is put the quantity so um, quantity there into get it out of the post variable for uh, post container sort of into the quantity variable and the same for the item and then output it so there's a few things here like that are terrible such as there's no um, escaping of what's been typed in we're just completely allowing our users to to type in whatever they like and we're accepting it as is and then we're displaying it uh, yeah it, it isn't good but that's that's like the old way of doing a form I'm sure you've come across that in the past so I just I just really wanted to cover like how it would look in the old way and then how um, sort of it's going to look even though we're not exactly doing this example um, yeah so in Symphony you're not going to end up with a form that looks like this you're not going to end up with select tags here and uh, at least not from the from your perspective from like a front end perspective you will end up with something that looks like this but from um, a developer's perspective it doesn't look like this but yeah, so the first thing to really know with Symphony is everything that you deal with with forms is uh, going to be using a class uh, to to put the data into that form. The the data, how how can I explain that better? Like the thing that really confused me when we when I first started learning how to use the form builder in Symphony uh, was how the data repopulates each of the different fields so i'll cover what this is doing first ignore this bit let's comment that out basically what this is doing is creating a form as it says create using the form builder this is a built-in symphony um, method we're saying this create form builder and we're getting this from the controller i believe yeah from the controller like inheriting this function um or this method should i say now we would be passing in some data, but we don't have to there, we can get rid of that. Um, and then we're adding some fields. So we're adding a name field, which is of type text. Um, we're adding an age field, which is of type integer. 
So these are telling Symfony ahead of time, like what sort of data to expect. We're adding our submit button. Now this is a relatively new thing um, in the old, uh, I think it was like two point, Symfony 2.2. .2. You didn't do it like this. You, you did this in the template itself, but from Symfony 2.3, you can do this via the controller. Um, well, in, you can do this via the form builder, should I say. Then we're saying get the form. So we're like we've told it how to make a form. Then we're saying get the form and every, everything stored into the form variable. And then simply we're returning this to our template. So we've just got a default template, which I'm going to cover in a sec. And we're passing in one variable to our um, to our template, which is the form. And we always need to call the create view method when we're displaying a form. So uh, we'll go to index and we have a very basic template it's just extending from uh, the base as uh, has been in all our examples and then we're just outputting using a simple tag of form and our form name like this can be anything so if this if we'd have called this like our form then this would be form our form simple as that and then if we go to the browser and refresh it uh, let's just do that we have our blank form. And as you saw there, there was some data then populated in, in this. And I'll show you like basically, well, come to that in a sec, I guess. So as, as we saw, we've got, let's just go back. We've got our name, our age, and our save field. Name, age, and save. If we open up the, uh, I'll get that. open up the source, you can see we have actually created something that looks similar to what we had in our TISAG example. We've got our form with its post method no action at the moment, that's uh, important. So nothing's actually gonna happen if we press the save or the submit button, which, whatever it's set as at the moment. Uh, we've got our fields, our type text, and what else have we got? Uh, our age, uh, let's label, input type number. So it's, it's telling um, from the types that we put in, from like the form types, uh, the field types that we're telling it, Symfony will then tell the, the build the form um, appropriately so it's setting the different um, yeah bits and pieces on the form as you might expect now there's also something else in here there's a hidden token for the form and that's our I believe our cross-site request forgery token our CSRF uh, token which again we, we've not had to do anything to get that in there which is nice um, so let's see what have we got yeah at the moment it doesn't actually do anything now as you saw when I first loaded up the example, there was some data already populated in there. And that is because we're using, um, we are, I'd already set up like a, a person. So I'd instantiated a new person from the person entity. Uh, where are we? Uh, if you've been following along with the examples, you'll have seen this in the doctrine video. Yeah, so I've, oh, I've also changed up the, the pattern that used to be hello. If you've been following along, I've just changed it just to be slash. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, and then I've cleared the cache after that, after changing that route. Sorry, should have mentioned that at the start. Anyway, so now what we can say is, well, if we refresh this, you'll see because I've not passed this person into this form, there's nothing actually happening at the moment any different to what we've previously seen. So yeah, there's nothing going on there. But what we can do is say, pass this person, and we can just get rid of these bits for now into our form. Again, nothing should happen because at the moment it's just a new person. And these fields match up if you like follow along. We have a name and an age in our form and we also have it in our class. So these things match up exactly. So Symfony can just sort of say, okay, well, um, this data matches exactly. So I can just repopulate these fields. But as I say, there's nothing set there. So we refresh again, still nothing in there, but then we can just add bits in like, so set up our class, add some stuff into it. We're just setting the name to Billy the Kid, refresh it, and we are passed it there. So because we've told the form to build from this class, it can just go into the class, pick out the matching um, well, ma matching um, like parameters, and then, uh, sorry, I think it's attributes, sorry. And then it just repopulates and it calls the getters on there. So like the getters where I would get name. Pretty sure if I do this, might have to clear the cache there. This should probably break it. 
unless that's a let's see yeah so basically what it's doing is trying to call the get name in the background of the is name or has name whatever but it's trying to call a method in the background and that's where that's populated from so let's get put that back not sure if a cache clear is required there but symphony usually uh, so yeah and then we also populate that bit And there we go. I mean, this is important because when we get to using Doctrine with our form, you will see like when our, when we've gone into Doctrine and we've pulled out an entity, we can then reuse that to populate the the form from the stuff that's in our database. So it's like it's pretty important, I guess. Yeah. So that's that's like a basic form. Um, it doesn't do anything at the moment, and that's I guess the next part of the video. So yeah, I'll, I'll come on to that now. Okay, so we've got a basic form set up, but at the moment, as we know, it's not actually submitting anywhere. Nothing's happening when we're clicking submit. Um, the reason for that is that we're not telling Symfony how to actually handle our form submission. And to do that, we need to use some new um, methods from the form builder, such as the handle request method, which just looks at whether the form has actually been submitted and then takes the request uh, variable, which we'll sort out in a sec. And then if all is good, and the form is valid, then we do some logic. In this case, we're just going to redirect to the MCM demo homepage root, which is set up in here. Now, if you've been following along, this was set up as hello. Um, I've just set that back to just uh, slash. And if you do so, if you're following along and you, you're changing that, then do remember to clear the cache. I've just shortened it there. You could, uh, because if that, essentially when you're typing in a console command, if it's unique after a point, you can just get away with the bare minimum, just laziness basically. Um, right, so yeah, we're submitting back and nothing's happening at the moment. So if we, well, the first thing that we need to do, oh, I'll show you actually where I'm getting this from, not just making it up. So on Symphony homepage, documentation, um, oops, documentation, forms, chapter, down on the right here, we've got handling form submissions on the left, sorry. And uh, we are, just ripping out these bits basically we're going to be using the the request um, class and we need to put it in here in our action and then yeah this is like some sort of free stuff that we get included for handling um, submissions basically yeah so we need to set this up request be careful if you're using an IDE that you get the right um, class as it sometimes likes to put that at the top the browser kit version you want the HTTP foundation version and we also want the request there so that's all set up now if we set this up again it's just going to forward us back to our home page so we don't want to do that really because it's not going to show us anything so we're just going to exit and say form was valid so now if we click save uh, if we reload our form oh, it's all right save that form was valid okay right now because we've told symphony to use um I had this, I think, set as text, but it still works because by default it will set a field type to uh, text anyway. Yeah, so we can get rid of that. You don't actually need to tell it it's text. It's like a one-off, um, but it will also try and guess them. Uh, if you don't put anything in here, it will try and guess that this is of type integer. It's not 100% reliable and you should just definitely always tell Symfony what type of form field you're using, uh, even if it's just text. I mean, it's just sort of best practice I guess um, yeah so we've we've added in a text field type and an integer field type now by doing so we've also gained access to some of Symfony's built-in validation components uh, of in this case if we try and type in a load of t uh, text into a number field it's going to tell us that this is invalid now this is actually form validation uh, in progress it's not front-end validation this is back-end validation so one thing that we could do is uh, set this to required. Oh, so one thing that you can do here is uh, pass in a third parameter, which is always an array. And we can say required is false. And if you're wondering where I'm getting them from, it is on the form. Let's just see. Now you can get it from here, the built-in field types, but one of the better places to get this from is actually in the reference and the form field types and then we've got integer 
and then you've got all these additional sort of options that you can throw in here now some of them are common and some of them are unique to the field type itself like these are specific to the integer field type whereas these you will find on all of the different field types i'm just using the required one here by default it's saying it's true we're saying actually we want this to be false uh, we don't want to require this so if we do go back to our form and then if we just remove that it's valid all right, just to prove that that wasn't just a fluke and take this bit out try again now we get this HTML5 front end validation, which is to fill out the form. So we're saying actually, um, yeah, we can leave that as required false. Let's just see, but we want that to be required true. Let's just do that. So we can actually tell it from, um, there's various different ways of telling the uh, form front end to turn off HTML5 validation and there are reasons you would want to do this basically you don't want to rely on it it's not reliable if people have uh, various bits and pieces turned off in the browser which they can do in the corporate world and all sorts of stuff um, they can bypass your front end validation relatively easily and that's obviously not what you want so there's, as I say there's various ways of telling the, the form to turn off validation and if we do if we look on the left here you've got form validation we scroll down here, you've got this HTML5 validation block. What it's saying is we, there's two ways of turning this off. We can either do it in the form tag or we can do it in the submit tag. So if you was going to do it in the form tag, if we was rendering out our form like in the traditional manner, like form, blah, 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 we've actually got this no validate action and uh, parameter, should I say, or yeah. So we just set it like that, form, no validate, no validate, and then all's good in the world. But in this case, we're just using this basic symphony uh, twig tag thing to help us um, render really quickly so we're just going to do in here array i'm going to say atra which is attributes for this um, field oh and this takes an array as well which is a little bit confusing but i'll explain in a sec and then we're going to say form no validate because remember in here it was saying no validate if you're doing it on the form tag but if you're doing it on the button tag um, we need to use form no validate and we're just going to say form no validate form no validate straightforward enough so the other things you can do in here is like set the CSS class uh, you, you might do like that's quite a common use of the Atra um, attributes tag thing um, yeah so we could say like my submit button whatever and then if we reload that and then go to view source have a quick look We've got these additional bits and pieces added to our, our button. Yeah, so that's that's basically that. And then if we do form was valid. So yeah, it's, it's sort of bypassing. If we put in this, see, because this is a required field by default, but we're bypassing that. Uh, did I actually submit something? Yeah, see, you can see that it's html5 validation has actually taken place but it's been bypassed completely so it's saving it it's bypassed but if we take this off and try again see so that, that's basically all that's doing and that's that's why um yeah that's why you sort of you wouldn't want to use it uh front end anyway um but yeah as i say you've also got this that you, you it's kind of easy to get confused between the html5 validation and the symphony side validation so even though we've got uh, let's put that on even though we've got our no validate method set the symphony validation is still going to take place behind the scenes and it's not going to let us do that because that is not valid like that's we're trying to put text into an integer field so yeah that's just something to be aware of um other types of, of buttons and stuff that we can use as I say, can be found in, not buttons, sorry, field types. You've got all these different ones here. Uh, you can look at them at your leisure, really, but basically some of these will map up nicely to different field types, that, uh, different parts of your database, like obviously date, time, and stuff. If you're using dates and times in your database fields, these are going to match up. We're going to cover entity uh, separately. 
um, choices. Yeah, it's like radio buttons and stuff. Uh, so you've got like a whole sort of set and Symphony will automatically apply some validations depending on which ones you use. So yeah, very handy. Um, let's see. Okay, so at the moment we're rendering out our form using the uh, twig helper function of just form and then the name of our form um, that we've passed in. So that's good, but as you've seen in the browser, it doesn't really give us a nice looking bit of output. And again, if we look at the source, everything's in one line. It's, it's a bit messy and yeah, it's not great. Now, in reality, you're more than likely going to be um, wanting a little bit more granularity when working with, with your form in your template. And thankfully, Symphony provides us with that. And we can get access to that by going to the documentation for forms, rendering a form in a template. And then you can see the first thing that we've got is this like a bit more detailed output. Now this is based on their template, uh, their entity. So we're going to need to change things up a little bit. The first thing we need to do is change anything called form to our form, making sure we get each one. And also we're going to need to make sure that these match up. I'll cover these. I'll come back to these in a sec. So what this is doing basically is it's saying form start our form. So this would render out like the form, the action, the method, any other bits and pieces that are in there. Okay, and we'll just dump this here at the end. So that's what that bit's doing, and that's effectively what that's bit, that bit's doing. But this is also going to throw in our CSRF tag, our cross-site request forgery token. So yeah, and then we've got our form errors, which is our global form errors. Anything that Symphony's validation can't seem to apply to a more specific part of the form. Um, it's going to dump, dump them out of the top. And then we've got our form row, which is actually a combination of three other elements, which is the label, the errors, and also the widget. Now the widget is basically a fancy name for the input box or, you know, input buttons, whatever. But that's, that's what's going on there. And also at the end there, there's another thing that the end tag does. It, uh, is like a catch-all for anything that we've missed and yeah and the CSR, CSRF token which we can also render out manually so we don't need any of this bits because again Symphony is going to do that for us but what we do need to do is make sure that our form row um, is actually matching up to something that we have so ours are called name and age again we've added them in there it's going to change these out to name and age and if we look quickly before I do this we've got this all in one line messy so if we save that off refresh hooray nothing's changed but if we look at the at the uh, source we can see that things have slightly changed we've got our stuff is now on a different line I think we must have put them uh, it's putting them into divs automatically for us um, I think it was doing that before but you just it was messy so we couldn't really see and then it's still ditching out the last bits and pieces, um, which we've not rendered. So it's like the catch all stuff. Uh, let's see what else can we do now that might be good enough for you. You might want to, you know, add divs and stuff and just tidy stuff up, but you can also then, um, render out these rows more specifically. So if we just scroll down a little bit, then you've got this render each bit by hand. And if we do this, let's copy one of these in. Let's paste that bit in there, and it was named. Okay, and then if we do, uh, we'll just leave that as it is for now, just one of them done. Refresh that. We can see now it's changed this even more, and we've got our label on one line, as we told it to, a blank because we have no errors, and then a um, input, the widget. So it just matches up nicely there. So those are our three things there. And then we can do, uh, do that for form age. Oh, something like that, age. And then let's just refresh. So yeah, basically now we have a nice looking bit of HTML. But what we actually wanted to do was, um, well, we, we're using Bootstrap, so we might as well just do go ahead and use um, 
well, if you've been following along with our examples throughout, we have been using Bootstrap. So we might as well use the forms um, bits and pieces that are provided with, with Bootstrap. So the first thing we can do is stick our divs in like that, div class form group. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly pause the video and then resume it when I've put in the Bootstrap styles and so you can see it. Okay, so I've just set up the basic sort of outline from Bootstrap. I've also put in our save button. And at the moment, if we look at this, you can see now that it's basically just rendering out. There's a little bit more um, padding and so on been put in. Uh, so the other thing though, if you look at the Bootstrap, um, the CSS, the, yeah, was that right, the CSS? I think that was right. Um, if you look here, we do need to put in on our inputs various bits of CSS there and yeah. Now, you could do this in the template, but I generally wouldn't. The reason being that your template shouldn't be, um, well, from my, in my opinion, your template should be quite clean and any sort of changeable logic should be going in your um, controller. Depends really, depends if you're working with uh, more front-end guys or if it's back-end, um, yeah, if you're mainly a team of back-end guys, keep stuff well, it's your decision, but you can put stuff inside these, um, like the widget here. You could do like, uh, let's see, is it class? I think it's class. And then what's the um, form control? Just to see. Class. I might have needed to go in the attributes actually, so I'll come back to this in a sec if it doesn't work. Uh, just refresh that. Nothing seems to have changed there. Let's have a quick look. Required. Yeah, so it's nothing's worked there. So we need to put this in. Atra. So essentially what you're doing is copying the same thing from your template, uh, from your controller. Oh my word. And this is why I don't like doing it in the templates themselves because you end up with this mucky looking syntax. Let's see if that does it. Yeah, so we've like added a class in there and I'll explain this a little bit better now. So we've added the class of form control, which is a bootstrap thing, not a symphony thing. Remember, if you're only using symphony, this is not, um, yeah, if you've not got bootstrap, then this is probably not gonna make too much sense. But what we're saying is take the form widget and we're rendering out our form widget of our name. Then we're adding in an array, which is what this weird looking syntax actually is telling it. And we're saying, add in the attributes as we have done no, go here. As we have done here, we want an array of attributes and inside the array of attributes, we want the class. And that's basically what this is doing there. We've got an array of attributes and then in there, one of them is a class, but it's messy and that's why I don't like it. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm just gonna do a refresh, make sure that's back to normal, yep. And then what I would normally do personally is actually put them into into here. So I would do array. And then what we've got the same thing here. So we might as well just nick it. Nick it. All right. And then, um, yeah. Is that right? What's gone wrong there? Add attribute, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I don't need that. Silly me. And what's going on there? What's happening? Why won't it work? Add, 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 array. That matches that. Oh, I need one more. Doubt. Right, so, yeah. We don't want the class of that. We want the control group, was it? Something like that. Control group and control group. Form control. Bloody hell, get it right. So, yeah. Things have changed slightly in Bootstrap 3 refresh but there you got it's taking it in now from the controller and again we can just copy and paste this onto the integer I'll do and then we can change this to button button large button success I think it is something like that and we just refresh that yeah I'm sure it's button button default I don't know they've changed all the they changed everything again what is it? Button something or other. Button, I don't know. Button LG. 
man alive. Why do they have to do that? Not an LG. Yeah, so I mean, as you just throw in stuff on there and it's just changing bits up. And again, you can, you know, go through forms, horizontals, blah, 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 blah. blah. So yeah, if you wanted these things to display in line, I'm sure there's something in here that tells you how to do that. Is it in line? Oh, I don't know. I prefer the, the things next to them, but yeah, just been pedantic. Anyway, so that's that's basically rendering out your form. And you can see how you've passed in like um, attributes to your form, whereas you, your template itself is looking pretty clean. Uh, this can be quite confusing though to front end devs. So yeah, it's one of them sort of personal preference things. Um, I mean, you can also, as I've said, you can go into, if you go into the form types, say like the text, you can see certain things have got um, like the inherited options here. Text one's no good. You've got this, like the integer one has got its specific options, but then they all inherit these same options like the label. But you've also got like um, the labels also got label attributes. Like it's not very well, uh, let's see, label. Right, so instead of, if we didn't want this to be called name, we could be called your name. And then we could also have the label attributes, which is an array. And then again, label attributes, array. Takes that in there. Yeah, so like you can have the label has got its own different CSS class. And I'm sure there's something in here for, um, I'm sure these labels have, always had labels, what's that? SR only, what's that? Screen readers only. I'm sure there's a way to get these to display in line. Let's do our control label. Let's just put this in, just so we can see it. Let's just try that. Let's just try call large six. I don't know if this will work. No, nah. I don't know. All I was trying to do is get this so that this box was in line. I don't know, it's bootstrap. Uh, it's, we're not learning bootstrap, we're learning symphony. So, but what I'm trying to show you really is that you can add in all these additional parameters and yeah, that's how you do it. And it keeps the, the templates looking nice and clean. You do end up with messy looking form like, but you know, you've got to put the mess somewhere. The downside is at the moment is we're building this entirely in our controller action, which means a couple of things. Firstly, your controller looks like crap. And secondly, you can't reuse this in a different action. Say we had um, another action here, like, and this was called, um, I don't know, my action, whatever. Then in this case, we're gonna to need to create the form all over again. And obviously that's not good at all. So we want to look at creating our forms inside reusable classes. Uh, and to do that, we are gonna create our own form class. So again, this is just stuff straight from the manual. Scroll back to the top. On the left here, we've got a creating form classes. And yeah, we're just gonna nick all of this bit because why not? And here you can see that their convention is to put it into your bundle, bundle name, form type. So we're gonna create our st structure called form. And we're gonna create one called type. Then we're going to create our, what is it, person type. And let's paste that in. Now we need to put in the tag. And we need to change this up a little bit. MCM, demo bundle, form type. And then we need to change this to person type. And then we've got these builder. So yeah. And we need to change this as well to person. And that's pretty much it. We just need to copy this bit out, cut that out, and paste that in. So essentially what we've done now is created a reusable um, form class. And we can get rid of this. We can get rid of that entirely and save that off. Let's just go back to the form. And then instead now we can use this uh, create form method. So we'll just copy that bit out. 
Oh, let's get rid of that bit. And then we just want to do person, well, person type. So yeah, and then in make sure that you use statements gone in. So it's looking a lot cleaner. And if we refresh it, this should all still work. The only difference, yeah, no, there's going to be no difference there. Oh, okay, fair enough. The data's not been set. Ah, that's because we're not passing in. Right, yeah. So all we've done is we've replaced that with the form builder method with the create form method and we're passing in the it takes two arguments the create form uh, method the first is the form that we wish to create the second is the data we wish to populate that form with so the person uh, person type form requires a person to go into it i appreciate this this bit is a little bit complicated well not complicated but it's um it's a bit of a funky concept to get your head around so I'm just going to sort of reiterate it a couple of times, a few different ways to um, yeah, try and get it through what I mean. If you understand it, fair enough, sorry, keep going over it. But what we're saying is previously, let's just get rid of that. Previously, we were using the form builder to create our form inside the controller. So all our bits and pieces we put in there, job was a good one, we would get the form, it outputs, no problem. We also passed in the person. If we didn't, we just refresh now. We get the same thing because we've not passed in any data to that form. If we put the data in and change this to whatever, our form is pre-populated with our data. All right. Now, instead, we're going to pass this in a create form method and we're going to pass in the person type. That's weird that it got rid of Oh, it's because I've um undid yeah so this time we're using the create form method and rather than putting in all the crap there we put it into this person type class so we're actually creating a new instance of the person type class which is this form this form uh, this create form method takes um a implementation of abstract type so don't worry about that too much but it takes anything that implements abstract type and then the second parameter we can pass in should we desire it is the actual data itself. So again, just refresh, and we've got our our form populated with our data, and we just change that up as, oh, don't wanna do that. In fact, we don't wanna pass it in a string at all. Silly me. Uh, and then, yeah, so cool. So that's basically it. We're just, now when we do a second action, like whatever, blah action, then we can reuse that form really quickly. No duplication of data. This, you know, could now be like for whatever. And this, you know, it can be completely different and we get away with it because we're not, we're just reusing that class. So it's, uh, yeah, the dry principle, I guess, is, is what we're doing there. Don't repeat yourself. And that's basically how we use a form class. There's other bits and pieces you can do in here. We can tell it um, bits and pieces like how, what sort of data um, to accept and so on but it's perhaps a little bit out of scope of, of a beginner's um, tutorial is this bit here basically and uh, we need the options resolver interface you will see this though in the real world so I might as well just put it in anyway to get used to seeing it let's make sure that you've got the right um, yeah, namespace and everything for your class set up and then the data class here you would do it like MCM demo bundle entity person and again this goes back to the same thing i was saying about these fields here you can you can let symphony guess it but it is always better to tell it like so that there's no confusion you know and any sort of magic that's happening in the background if you can get away with not using that magic you can sort of remove potential avenues of problems um, so yeah that's that's pretty much our form built using a class it is pretty straightforward it's the same you're more than likely going to use it this way than actually building the form inside the uh, controller because of reusability, basically. So yeah, that's uh, creating forms and using form classes. Let's see what else we can look at changing the method type in the next section. Right, so to demonstrate the next section, which is just how to change the method and the action of your form, um, I've set up a very basic sort of thank you template and the thank you route so that when the controller goes through and is valid, it forwards us on to this thank you action, which will then render out a little cheesy template saying thanks for stopping by person name. Um, 
literally just to go through this very quickly it's just going to return another controller action and the action is in the MCM demo bundle which is where we are it's in the default controller and it's in it will forward on to the thank you action remember you never put controller or action after either of these default controller thank you action you never put that in then we pass it a parameter which is person name which is what it expects there and it's literally just the name of whatever's in the person name variable um, yeah attribute whatever so then that will return that which is actually returning another method which is just rendering that template out so I'm just gonna get rid of that and again I've put this um, route in if you're gonna do that if you're following along remember to clear your cache after you've done that so the thing uh, the thing that's kind of weird is you might think that you put your set method and your set action inside the person type um, you know to keep everything keep your controllers clean and whatnot but if you think about it if you did that your uh, person type would become sort of hard coded and not reusable so you actually put this bit into the create form um, statement here so what you would do and this is relatively new as well uh, so it's on the documentation it's in the forms documentation and just it's pretty much where we were changing the action and method of a form you can do it there if you're doing create form builder or you can actually do it here um, if you're using the create form if you're using a form class I'm just going to take both of those bits out paste them in because I'm lazy okay so again we don't really need to change our action um, because it will automatically submit back to wherever the form originally came from but we're going to tell it anyway because it's best practice not to just leave it to guess um, I'm just going to put that in there and our method is going to be set to get for now just so that you can see it in action really and we're going to refresh and just take a quick look and we can see now that our form method at the top has been set up as um, before it was empty and I think the method was set to post by default so if we do a submit you can see in the top there you've got all the usual get crap and yeah generally you're probably not going to use get very often you would want to just I think it even defaults to post but what we'll do is we'll set that here to post and then we'll just refresh refresh that make sure that's changed which it has which is good so now when we save it says thanks for stopping by blah 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 right so that's good so we're setting that action up and yeah but one thing that's sort of weird here is we've set up this action and uh, sorry set up a root which is just slash thank you and if we go to slash thank you this is going to cause us a problem see it's saying it requires a, a value for person name uh, but there's no default one set now you can you could add it in here you could do um, a default value of person name uh, person name actually I don't think I need that person name and then not set you could do it like this it's a bit rubbish I don't know if this will work without ref yeah damn it let's try it again so thank you not set that's one way of doing it but it's not the best way of doing it what the best way of doing this is it's literally saying methods and we only want to allow the post method and then now we should get a different error entirely because we don't want our users to be able to call that route directly anyway so it's basically saying it's not allowed and in the if you remove app what do we get there yeah 405 method not allowed so you actually in the real world won't won't be able to call the slash thank you page by by itself so that's just a, a few little bits and pieces now the the benefit really of doing this and again you can see you can do it in the the template nah that's your call well the benefit of doing this really is that we can tell it exactly where to send our um, our data off to and that means you can separate out like the the display of the form and the processing of the form and whatnot so yeah it's it's pretty handy really pretty pretty cool stuff um, I said we'd cover form validations I've covered the validations in as much detail as I want to cover in terms of forms at this stage I will cover 
um, validation separately as it's you know it's a bit of a larger piece really and uh, yeah lastly I said I'd also cover the CSRF token and again that's just on the left um, and we just click the CSRF pr protection and in here there's various bits we can add into our default options but what I want to do is just find the tag where's the tag CSRF because we can just render this out I know uh, let's just see Moscow I have this somewhere and what it is it's like a if we go into our our form template um, I'll show you one other quick thing as well before I finish this off uh, where are we CSRF oh, I should know is the site after all how to render just the CSR token so yeah that's just that bit there and you can instead of relying on it to go in at the end we can paste it wherever we want it to be form I think we'll need to change that out to our form token and we can just refresh that see if that's worked yep so we've we've rendered that out manually um, yeah that just stops uh, uh, cross-site request forgeries if you're not sure what that is uh, again it's sort of out of scope of this video look it up on wikipedia um what was the other thing i was going to show you all ah, right yeah one thing that you would probably do as well because i've shown you how to reuse forms like that um you would probably want to put this into sort of like oh, what's this sub template it's nonsense let's get rid of that um i don't know you might you might just call this like blocks or something. That's what I normally do. Blocks and then um, what is this person form? Dot html dot twig. And then you would do like cut the whole thing out, paste that in there, lose all its formatting. Of course, why not? Why wouldn't it? Get rid of that. Knock it back a few lines. Jobs are good and just keeps things nice and simple. And then you can do include. And then what is it? Um, MCM demo bundle. Uh, we're in default, aren't we? Default default block slash person form HTML twig. Let's see if that works. Yeah, because the the advantage of doing that like that is that then instead of having to copy and paste the form bit in every time, you can literally just include that as many times well, in any other template that you want. So it just becomes more reusable. Uh, and that's it really for for forms. There's there's a lot more to them, and we're going to cover the form, the more advanced form types like the the field types, uh, specifically entity and um, what are the other ones. Let's go into quickly have a quick look. Uh, I should know them off the top of my head, but I don't. Let's see what we got. Entity. Entity is the big one, really, because that's allowing you to get stuff straight out of the database. Um, and the, it's a little bit more involved if you look. Yeah, you can use the query builder to create like a query of, um, say, you've got like 20 different options in your database, but you only want to show the user maybe like five of them. You can write a query that, that shows just those off. Uh, what else have we got? Dates and times. We need to cover them. Uh, checkboxes well that comes under entities again um, as you'll see collections and yeah collections are like collections of sub forms um, yeah guess it, it does get quite involved and we've really only scratched the surface of it but that should be enough to get you started on um, symphony forms thanks for watching